Okay, so new MacBook Air. Let's get this bad boy out of the box. And I wonder how long I can make this thing last. All these kids are using their new M34 laptops, but I've still got my M1 and it still works. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that skit at the start. Now, I definitely encourage you to watch this video in its entirety if you've just bought a new Mac, or even if you already have a Mac and you wanna maximize its lifespan. And this is especially important if your budget is on the lower end or if you're a student and you want these things to last five to 10 years at least before having to go out and upgrade again. Just quickly, a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've used Skillshare a lot recently to improve the quality of my content, but more on that later. Okay, so the first step in maximizing your lifespan of this machine or a Mac mini or an iMac, it doesn't really matter which one it is, is maximizing your budget before you even purchase the machine. So what do I mean by this? Well, it's pretty standard practice when you're upgrading to a new machine or just buying a new machine for the first place to try and spend as much as you can to future-proof said machine while still staying within your budget. The rule of thumb is the more powerful a machine is when you purchase it, the less its performance will drop over time. So what does this mean for you guys at the pre-purchase stage before you even purchase a Mac? Well, it means spending money on upgrades that you know are gonna come in handy. So for example, choosing a more powerful CPU or a more powerful GPU, or even upgrading the RAM from eight to 16 gigabytes are some common ones. And if you're wanting to keep your MacBook for a really long time, and if you've got a Mac that has a soldered on SSD, that is you cannot remove it, consider also bumping up your storage from the minimum to say 512 gigabytes, but more on that a little bit later on. Also bear in mind that most Macs these days cannot be upgraded in the future due to Apple's practice of soldering components or in layman's terms, gluing components into the Mac. So if you think you're gonna need 16 gigabytes of RAM in the future, for example, you need to get it now. Also, if you're still on the fence about whether to get a Apple Silicon MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro, I'll touch on that in a future section. Now, all of this being said about upgrades and choosing a really powerful Mac is true on one hand, but on the other hand, especially with the new Apple Silicon Macs, the performance of these things are really good to begin with. So don't feel bad if you can only afford a base model because for most people, a base model is all you need. And it's gonna last you for a surprisingly long amount of time, in my opinion. So once you've purchased your Mac, whether it's a base model or an upgraded version, the next most common thing that's gonna decrease the lifespan of these machines is obviously physical damage, namely drop or fall damage, and also water damage. So drop and fall damage is relatively easy to prevent against. Just make sure you don't put your laptop in any kind of precarious positions, such as the edge of a couch or a bed. Also consider investing in some kind of protective case, such as this one from Thule. I've been using this one for about six or seven years, ever since I was at university. Uh, you can see it's pretty beat up as well, and it definitely works well. Uh, you can see it's kind of got a ridged design. The edges are quite thick. Uh, and it's actually semi waterproof because it's rubber on the outside. This isn't sponsored by Thule, by the way. This is just a really great case. So I'll try and find it on Amazon and link it to you guys down below. So something like this is gonna cost you about 30 or 40 bucks. And if you actually drop your laptop inside this, it's probably gonna survive. Unlike those really crappy, thin, cheap neoprene sleeves you can get from Amazon, stay away from those. Get something like this, especially if you're going to and from work or university or school and you're gonna be having your laptop in a bag. So moving on to liquid damage, again guys, pretty easy to prevent against. My rule of thumb is to not have any open liquids within about two feet or 45 centimeters of my machine at all times. That includes glasses of water, alcohol, juice, all that kind of stuff. Now the exception to this is obviously if you have a bottle and you can actually close the top, that's totally fine. But any kind of open liquids like a glass of water, keep it well away or at least a foot or two away from your device. Now, if you're wondering about scratches on the exterior, I honestly wouldn't be too worried. These tend to hold up pretty well. Uh, there's no paint or anything like that on the chassis, it's just solid aluminum or aluminum for my Australians out there. Um, so don't be too worried. You will see some scratches on the bottom over time, but they're very, very minimal. If you are worried, you can get a skin from D-Brand, for example, and slap it on the top or on the bottom. 
But to me, that's unnecessary and that money is much better spent on something like a case, for example. Now, moving on to the next factor in terms of your max longevity, and that is heat. So if you guys aren't already familiar, heat is one of the biggest factors in decreasing the lifespan of electronics. Now, if you do have an Apple Silicon Mac, these things are actually super, super heat efficient, much more so than the previous generation Intel ones. But you can also aid the heat dissipation of your MacBook or Mac mini or whatever by using a stand or simply keeping it off a bed or a couch, for example, if doing intensive tasks. Also consider the ambient temperature. So if your room or outside temperature is super, super hot, maybe try not to do any hardcore gaming or rendering on the machine in that hot environment and instead move to a cooler environment or just wait until later in the day, for example, when the ambient temperature is a little bit less. Now, this next tip is specific to Apple Silicon Max, mainly for people on the fence about choosing between an Air and a Pro. So the Air is obviously passively cooled. That is, it does not have a fan whereas the MacBook Pro does have a fan. So why this is important is if you're doing a lot of gaming, rendering or editing, for example, and the CPU or the GPU is gonna be regularly getting quite toasty, having the fan on the Pro is gonna keep the internal temperature lower than the air, and that might actually help to increase the lifespan of the Pro instead of if you're just doing everything on an air, which is passively cooled. But again, this is mainly for people who do a lot of activities where your machine is gonna be getting quite hot. If you're just doing basic tasks or maybe even just a bit of editing or gaming every now and then, doesn't really matter which one you go for, in my opinion. Now, just before we go into the next section, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including content creation, design, photography, videography, and more. I've found Marquez's Skillshare class, YouTube success, script, shoot, and edit with MKBHD really interesting and will be implementing some of his unique camera angles in future videos. Skillshare classes include a combination of video lessons and class projects, all designed to fit your schedule and skill level. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Now moving on to the battery, which is a question I get asked almost every day. Guys, I won't go into this too much in detail. I have a super, super in-depth video on this already. So I'll link it up in the top right hand corner. Definitely do go and check that out after this video. But the short version of that video is try to keep the battery as cool as possible, charge it in bursts to keep the overall charge between about 20% and 80%. Ideally, you wanna keep your charge around 50% and also keep your MacBook plugged in if you're gonna be sitting at a desk for hours and hours using it. There's no need to actually keep unplugging it, charging it, plugging it back in if you're just sitting at a desk. But again, watch that video, it's going to explain everything. Now at the end of the day, if there are any issues with your battery, or for example, you have this thing for five years and the battery isn't holding a charge as well as it used to, it's not really a big deal. You can actually get the battery replaced. Depends on which country you're in and which model of MacBook you have, but it's relatively inexpensive. And most batteries are actually going to last about five years before you actually do need to replace them. So don't stress about the battery that much. Now, moving on to cleaning, I'm sure you guys have seen the videos out there of absolutely filthy MacBooks getting clean, and your MacBook is no exception. Try to keep it as clean as you can. So starting with the screen, what you wanna do is you wanna get a special microfiber cloth, and you wanna get a special screen cleaning solution. I'll link these products down below in the description as well. And if you buy a proper screen cleaning fluid or liquid, it's not gonna damage the screen, and it's gonna be a lot safer than water. All you have to do is spray a tiny bit of the solution on a microfiber cloth, gently rub the screen until it's clean while using your hand to support the back. Now, if you have a MacBook Pro with a fan, consider opening up the back chassis every 12 to 18 months to clean out all the dust and debris that sometimes accumulates inside these machines, especially if you live in a dusty environment or you have a pet, for example, you will probably find quite a bit of stuff clogging up the fan. So it is a good idea to clean it every now and then. I do have a video on this on my channel, so feel free to check that out. 
Now, the reason this is important is that a buildup of dust and debris in the fan will decrease the cooling capacity of your laptop, leading to decreased performance and increased heat. The fan will probably be a lot louder as well because it needs to work harder to keep the internal components cool. Now, moving on to the next section that affects the longevity of your machine, and that is performance. Now, guys, a really, really common misconception I hear is that computer hardware slows down over time. That is not true at all. Let me explain it to you guys real quick. There are two main things that constitute this rumor. So number one is obviously as time goes on, the technology and components within your computer, they do become outdated, whereas software and apps become more advanced. It's like trying to run a modern computer game from a laptop from 2010 you're just not gonna have a good time. Now, secondly, over time, the operating system, which in this case is macOS, can become slower and cause performance issues or the dreaded spinning beach ball. Now, the reason for this could be a number of different issues. It could be programs not installed correctly, some corrupted files on the operating system, or just a load of unnecessary junk or files just clogging it up. Now, there are a couple of ways you can actually go into the operating system yourself and sort of clean it up make it a little bit faster. You don't need any kind of special program as well. You can just do it yourself. Tell me if you want a video on that and I'd be more than happy to make it for you guys. Now, another thing is I like to reset my Mac every one to two years. And by reset, I mean back everything up on an external hard drive and then go into the recovery partition on this machine and actually format the hard drive so that deletes everything. And then I reinstall the operating system, which is Mac OS, bring all of my files and programs back on. And it's basically like getting a brand new computer. Everything is going to be super smooth, super fast. And it's just a really good thing to do every couple of years to give your Mac a little speed, performance and usability boost. Now, moving on to probably the most controversial section of this video, and that is the internal SSD. So if you guys didn't already know, I did touch on it briefly at the start of this video, but Apple is more and more moving towards a world where everything on these devices are glued together or soldered on and you cannot remove them or cannot replace them. Now, for me personally, I don't agree with this practice. I really do not like it at all. If you're lucky enough to have an older MacBook, you can actually take off the back cover of the chassis, pull out the old hard drive or solid state drive and replace a new one. And that's great, especially if your SSD or hard drive fails because they are consumable devices. So they only have a finite lifespan. So that begs the question, how long will the internal SSD on your Mac last? So let's talk about TBW or total bytes written. It's a metric that describes how much data can be written to a drive before the memory cells within it begin to degrade and the possibility of data loss and entire drive failure increases. Now for a base model Mac with a 256 gigabyte SSD, the TBW rating is anywhere from 150 to 300 terabytes. No one really knows because that information isn't exactly made public by Apple. Now this TBW rating means you can comfortably write hundreds of terabytes before potentially seeing issues. I say potentially because there've been numerous tests done where SSDs have completely blown past their TBW rating and have been able to write petabytes of data before failing. I'm pretty confident in saying that even these entry level SSDs will probably last at least eight to 10 years with normal use before you start to see issues and before they potentially start to fail. That being said, if you do decide to upgrade the storage on your Mac from, for example, a base model 256 gigabyte version to a 512 gigabyte SSD version, the TBW rating will scale accordingly. So using that same example of 256 to 512, that has doubled the capacity, which means the TBW has doubled as well, which means you can write double the amount of data to the internal SSD when compared with a small capacity SSD before potentially seeing issues. So although you might not be able to get these Apple Silicon Macs with the SSDs soldered on to last forever, it has the potential to last a very long time as long as the internal SSD holds up. Now, speaking of the SSD failing and not being able to be replaced by Apple, there may actually be an option for you and that is the right to repair. 
Now, I'm not gonna go too much into detail on right to repair in this video. I definitely do recommend going onto Lewis Rossman's channel. He's also on YouTube. Have a watch of some of his videos. Also do some Googling to bring yourself up to speed. But right to repair in a nutshell simply just gives you the right to choose who, what and where your Mac is repaired or replaced by. Apple is trying to monopolize this so that you can only take this to Apple themselves and they can force you to pay or upgrade if you have an issue with this machine. And right to repair is super important because it gives you the choice as a consumer. So why is right to repair so important in terms of the SSD? Well, even though Apple says that it cannot be repaired or replaced, there might be other people out there such as Lewis Rossman that may be able to repair or replace it for you. And it's just important for us as consumers and owners of this product to have that choice if we wanted to and not just rely on Apple. Anyway guys, hopefully you enjoyed this particular video and I touched on a few useful tips and tricks for you. If you have any comments, as always, leave them down below. But apart from that, I'll catch you in the next one.